This is survival racing, urban off-road racing. The party at the end of the world. This is as rough and rugged as any previous motorstorm, if not more so. So what we're here to do is pull a couple of diaries together that really try and explain the two major modes in Motorstorm Apocalypse. Festival mode is the main single player campaign in Motorstorm Apocalypse. You'll race amongst buildings which are falling down around you, on the beaches, down in tunnels, in the sewers. In this game, the festival represents a much more story-driven campaign. Every race has a sense of persistence. You go from track to track, and whatever happens in the last race will follow over into the next race. What we've got in Festival are three different difficulty levels. They're each driven by a different character. A rookie character, a guy we call the pro, and Big Dog, the veteran. And you race as every character. You don't pick one of them. We've created much more accessible races in the start, and then much more challenging races at the end for the hardcore. So Festival mode we're aiming for probably around seven to eight hours of, of gameplay for a player that's familiar perhaps with racing games. But of course, there's, there's much reason to go back and replay for the festival because now we have a lot of unlocks and hidden items actually to find within the festival mode. I mean, we're aiming for somewhere in the region of 40 bespoke races, and that's more than we've ever had in the series before. If you play a lot of racing games, you know it's really important to be able to learn the track to get better and better at it. So, whilst multi events will play at the same time when you play through the same race, uh, and there's a lot of emergent possibilities. So players will experience certain levels of predictability that at least allow them to learn the tracks, but they're never too sure what's going to happen around every corner. Motorstorm has always been about the vehicle classes. Uh, we've now got 13 in total, which are five new vehicle classes. So you've got all the existing uh, vehicles from the previous games, monster trucks, big rigs, buggies, bikes, etc., which all bring their unique style and handling abilities to the game. We're now introducing vehicles which are a bit more suited to the city. So vehicles like supercars, superbikes, um, choppers, muscle cars, uh, and even super minis, more European style hot hatches. So they're all present in the game, but they've all been given the Motorstorm treatment. We noticed there was a lot of enthusiasm for taking the game into a city, but we really didn't want to do Motorstorm does urban racing. We wanted to do more than that and be more excited. You're driving down the sides of skyscrapers, jumping from rooftop to rooftop, going down into the sewers, onto the train lines. This is as rough and rugged as any previous motorstorm, if not more so. Because we've got all these different vehicle types and different parts of the city that we've created to use, there's a very different feeling between racing, say, a muscle car around the streets of downtown and racing a buggy down through the beaches and the parks. We made a very deliberate choice to give the player or handpick the player a vehicle for every race within the festival. And the reason being is that we can then tailor the, the grids, the AI that you're playing against, around that vehicle choice. For example, one of the races may feature the player on the bike, but then every other AI competitor has a big rig, and their objective is to just take you out. So you have to survive this race more than anything else. We've been somewhat famous, I think, in uh, gaming circles for our soundtrack. This time around, we've gone for a completely different approach. We've got one of the world's leading movie composers, Klaus Badelt, who, for example, did the Pirates of the Caribbean soundtrack. And he's created four amazing pieces of music. But what we've also done is contacted uh, some top remix artists and DJs. And they're going to give us an entire soundtrack that covers the whole game. And so what this allows us to do is, is to key back into the series um, and, the, and the soundtrack and the mood that that elicits in the previous games, but also do something completely unique. We used to get a lot of emails uh, from people who really wanted nighttime racing. The old mantra was race by day, party by night. The truth of the matter was a little bit more mundane. 
And that was, it was actually quite difficult to develop night races with the technology we had. And what we've decided to do this time around is make sure that it's, it's race and party, day and night. And we're never going to race kind of in the, in the middle of the night because it, it, we found it just isn't particularly enjoyable. It's dark enough so that the headlights have a use and it really makes the race feel different to how it would play out in the daytime. We've added life to the city in the form of a private military contractor and a bunch of crazy looters. You can run these guys over, some of them will attach themselves onto your car, and the military will start firing rockets at you. They've got a huge arsenal of tanks and helicopter gunships to try and disrupt your race and to try and get you to turn around and head back out in the city. When you play the game, it feels different. It feels like no type of off-road racing experience you've had and no type of urban racing experience that you've had before. They kind of come together really nicely to offer a whole fresh take on this type of experience. We're now saying it's racing and partying. 48 hours of insanity before everybody has to get the hell out of the city.